and we rock it and we rolling and we rolling and we rock it and we rock it and we roll. I'm tired. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna lay back in the bed after this. I'm not gonna lie to you. Transparency. <laughs> Transparency. I'm feeling very professional today. You know, I got my glasses on for once. I just, for some reason, I really don't be wearing my glasses in my videos. Probably because when I'm doing my hair, product tends to get on my glasses, so I take them off. But yeah, I got my glasses on today. My hair pulled back in this claw clip. I got my makeup on. I got my nails did. I got hair and clean underwear, you feel me? Like, I, I'm feeling very professional today. I'm feeling very done up, okay? What am I supposed to be? <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Michaela. Final Crest you didn't already know, and welcome to day three. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Day four. Welcome to day four of 12 Days of Christmas. <sighs> that's that's embarrassing. <laughs> I'm about to talk about what not to do to your natural hair. And yeah, because I just feel like y'all could use this information, honestly. Like any any information about natural hair is gonna help if you try to grow your natural hair and have healthy natural hair. Yeah, I'm gonna be dropping five tips on what not to do to your natural hair. Um, before I jump into it, there's the subscribe button, the like button, the bell notification button if you wanna go the extra mile, all at the bottom of the screen. And you know, I feel like you should have did this at the beginning, you know, when you clicked on the video, but you know, I'm gonna give you time right now to get that done. You feel me? Um, just a little bit, cause we don't, we don't have time for all that. You should already do this. But you see, I'm stalling for you, right? Like, why are you not moving? That was a little aggressive. <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> the first thing that you should not do to your natural hair is touch it a lot. And I know this tip sucks, because you know, when you have natural hair, when you have these beautiful curls, you really want to touch your hair all the time. Like, I know me personally, I struggle with this tip a lot because I do be touching my hair a lot, and I really try not to. But sometimes I just, I, I just can't help it. You know, I be touching my hair and not even thinking about it, not even realizing that I am touching my hair. So, and the only reason I'm not touching my hair right now is because it's pulled back. But like, if my hair was out, y'all would see me touching my hair every five seconds because my hair is beautiful. Like why wouldn't I touch it? It's really not a good thing to do because when you touch your hair, you're causing unnecessary friction and friction leads to frizz, friction leads to breakage and stuff that you really don't want your natural hair to be doing. Like the more you manipulate your hair and manipulating includes just touching it. Like just, you know, all that stuff. When you do that, you're causing unnecessary breakage, frizz, tension on your hair, which can be avoided if you just didn't touch it. You just left it alone. So that's the first tip. Like you do not want to touch your hair all that much. You, you definitely don't want it to be excessive. You, in my perspective, this is low key an impossible thing to do, to like not touch your hair at all when you're just like sitting around or whatever, but you know, I, I say like try to minimize how often you just touch your hair for like just no reason, you know? Cause I mean, like when you style your hair, like of course you're gonna have to touch it. But I'm talking about when you just sitting and your hair is out and you just, you know, twirling the ends, pulling on the ends, stuff like that. You don't wanna be pulling on your hair all that much. Like it's not, it's not good. But yeah, your hair is best when you just leave it alone. For real, for real, just leave it alone. Let it sit by itself. Let her do what she needs to do on her own. Your hair is an independent, is an independent gal, okay? It don't need fingers, okay? <laughs> Moving on to the next, next tip. The next thing I say not to do is detangle your hair when it's dry. And I, when I say like dry, I mean moisture-wise. Dang, can y'all, can y'all keep it up? When I say dry, I mean moisture-wise. And I mean like water wise, like you definitely don't want to detangle your hair or really you don't want to mess with your hair for all when it's dry. Like there's no water. Like if you ain't spraying no water on your hair, you don't, you don't want to 
you don't want to mess with your hair it's completely dry like that because again you're causing unnecessary breakage friction tension all that stuff when your hair is dry because like when your hair is dry it's really not open to any manipulation like your hair your hair doesn't want your help when it's dry spraying it with water makes it more susceptible and more like open to receiving like manipulation but when you try to do it when it's dry i mean i feel like if you ever try to comb out your hair when it's dry or even just mess with it in general while it's dry you see like it's just not a good idea because you struggling to do something that would be way easier if you just spray some water on it real quick. Anytime you met with resistance on something, that probably means it's not a good thing to do. So you definitely just, you, you don't wanna detangle your hair when it's dry like that. And you definitely don't wanna detangle your hair when you don't have no moisture in it. See, water is gonna give you moisture. And not just water, you wanna add like a leave-in or something before you try to mess with it because it softens your hair up. Not only does water soften your hair, but also like a leave-in, a moisturizer, something like that will soften it up. So you're not struggling to do what you need to do. Cause I know I've been there. I'll try to style my hair real quick while it's dry. And cause I just, you know, just feel like I don't really need to wet my hair, you know? And then my hair isn't coming out the way I want it to. So I keep trying to redo it over and over and whole time, it's just not coming out right. I'm getting frustrated and it's just not working out. Nine times out of 10, it was probably because I didn't apply any product. I didn't wet my hair or I probably wet my hair, but not that much and didn't apply any product. Like I'm really just trying to style my hair on dry. I'm really just trying to work magic in a desert. Like my hair is fully dry. That's, that's not, your hair is not gonna cooperate with you if there's no moisture in it and if it's fully dry. Like imagine trying to cook something, but your meat isn't even thawed yet. Like you can't do anything with those those frozen chicken legs. Like you gotta let them thaw out first. That's kind of the same with natural hair. Like you can't do anything with your natural hair until you get it in a state that where you can manipulate it easier. And the way you do that is putting water on it and putting some some kind of product on it that's gonna moisturize it otherwise like you you basically trying to break down a wall a concrete wall like you it's not gonna happen it's not gonna work my third tip on what not to do to your natural hair is leave protective styles in for too long i can't put a number on what too long is because like there's just too many factors that cause variability in that. Honestly, like, you know when you've had a protective style in for too long, you need to take it out. But I'm saying, like, don't leave them in for too long because the longer you have them in, the harder it's gonna be to take them down without having breakage, tension, stuff like that. Because the longer you have it in, the more new growth, the more your braids or twists or whatever are exposed to the environment and that's causing tension on it too so by the time you taking it out if you left it in for like three months compared to like a week your hair probably wouldn't have like any breakage for real after a week but after three months it's gonna be way harder to take it down without causing some kind of breakage because especially because like people really don't grasp this concept so when they try to take down a three month protective style three months is so dramatic i'm sorry one month protective style they don't realize that they have to be gentler. Gentler? More gen Is gentler a word? Y'all know what I mean. You People don't realize that you have to be more gentle with your hair the longer you have a protective style in. So people be trying to take these braids down and they're not being more gentle with it and they end up causing more breakage as opposed to being a little more gentle and kind to your hair while taking down a protective style. So that's why I say you just you just want to like avoid that situation altogether and just don't leave a protective style in for too long. Because I mean, like who really wants to sit there and take forever to take down some braids? Because you left them in for too long and now you have to be, you have to give your hair a little bit more TLC, not even a little bit, a lot, of, a lot more TLC, a lot more TLC and more time to take the braids down. Like you definitely don't want to rush through something like that. Otherwise you're just gonna be causing more breakage 
that could have been avoided had you taken it out like two weeks before instead of waiting another two weeks to take it out. Like, and honestly, like you can tell when you've had a protective style in for too long. When you got all this build up on your roots, you got a bunch of new growth, you got frizzy braids, frizzy whatever. Like that probably mean, probably mean you had it in too, too long. It's time to take them out. Like, but I definitely, I definitely can't put a number on it because some people do like wash their hair while they have braids and stuff in it. So that is definitely like a way to lengthen how long you have a protective style in because you're still taking care of your hair while it's still in the protective style. But a lot of people don't do that. So it's for the people who have protective styles in and don't really protect their hair while it's in the protective style. Don't really moisturize their hair, don't wash it. Stuff like that. If you're gonna completely leave your hair alone, like basically borderline neglected, then don't leave it in for too long because at some point your hair is gonna need moisture. Your hair is gonna need to be washed. That scalp is gonna need some TLC. So you definitely wanna, don't wanna leave it in for too long. But like, even when you do wash it, when you do refresh your braids every once in a while, like you're still gonna have to take it out at some point. And when that time has arrived, you don't want to hit the snooze button. You don't wanna ignore it. If it's time to take it out, just take it out. And honestly, I'm giving y'all this tip, but I also struggle with this tip because, you know, sometimes I just, I just, I'm just not ready to take it out yet. You know, I think we've all been there. And like, even like when I did those, I laid passion twists, I left those in for way too long. However, I was refreshing them. I was redoing some of the twists to keep it looking fresh. But even still, like I probably should have took those out two weeks before I actually took them out because when I saw you, the amount of new growth I had, it was it was a lot. And because my hair is soft and the the water wave hair is soft, it those twists low key be sliding. So that's why like some of it was new growth, but some of the hair was like because the twists were sliding. So. When you got a lot of new growth like that and the twists be sliding and stuff, like you realize all that weight from those twists is being pulled by your real hair. And that's really like not a good thing when you really think about it. Like you really don't want your hair to be holding all that weight, all that hair that's not your real hair. And it gets worse the more the twists or braids or slide down or whatever and the more new growth you got. So when that start happening, it's probably time to take it out. It's probably time to take them out because you really, you don't wanna put all that stress on your hair and on your scalp. It may seem like fine because, you know, your whole head is holding up the hair. So it's not gonna seem heavy for real, but your hair is holding up those twists, those braids, those locks or whatever. So you definitely don't wanna put all that stress on it. So yeah, I usually take my braids down or whatever when I see the buildup, when like all this up here is super frizzy, it's it's time to take them down. But like also I go off of the appearance too because like once my hair just looks dull and it just don't really look good anymore, which is usually around like three weeks to a month, that's usually when I take them out because at that point, I don't even want the style in my hair. I don't even want the style anymore because it just doesn't look good. So, so yeah, it's really up to you what too long is because there's a lot of factors that go into it. But bottom line, don't leave them protective styles in for too long, baby. Don't just let it, let them go. Let them go. Let the braids go. Okay. It's, it's okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to get used to taking care of your real hair again. And yeah and also like you to give your hair some space in between protective styles don't get braids and then have them in for a month and then take them out and then get braids again the next day like no your hair needs some time to breathe okay it needs some time to breathe definitely give your hair some some space in between protective styles you know just a little extra bonus tip don't be getting protective style after protective style after protective style not really taking care of your hair underneath those styles and then not giving any time in between those styles for your hair to just be you know but moving on to my fourth tip do not rush with styling your hair and this is so important i fall victim to this to this as well sometimes i do be rushing my hair 
but I can confidently say when I brush, I'm still very attentive to my hair. Like I'm not just pulling on it and doing all this extra stuff, trying to get it done. Like I'm still, I'm still working efficiently. It's just faster. I can't say the same for y'all. I cannot say the same for y'all. A lot of people, when they rush, they miss details. They pull harder than they need to. They cause more friction than they would have if they would just take their time. And you know, when you when you rush and you're not really being like efficient when you're rushing, it's gonna cause breakage, it's gonna cause frizz, it's gonna cause a bunch of unnecessary stuff that could have been avoided if you would just take your time and just do your hair without being frustrated and rushing and just trying to get it over with. Like, no, live in the moment. Don't cause unnecessary things that can happen to your hair if you don't just take your time it's really that simple honestly and honestly like when you don't rush and when you just take your time to do your hair your styles will come out better because because when you're not rushing you're paying more attention to the details and it's the details that make up the hairstyle like when you trying to rush through taking down the twist out you're gonna have more frizz than you would have had you taken your time because when you taking your time, you're gonna see those little knots and those twists, and you're gonna take the time to take that knot out without causing so much frizz. But when you rush in, you just gonna pull that twist apart and boom, frizz, and then you gotta take that knot out, and it's not gonna look good because you didn't take the time to cater to that one knot, if that makes sense. Yeah, when you rush in, you just miss details and you just be trying to get it done, but that's but when that happens your styles just really don't come out as good as they can you know it, it's not it's not reaching its potential it's not so take your time don't rush slow touch dun, 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 dun. anyway <laughs> tip number five don't let anybody do your hair don't let anybody on your scalp don't let nobody don't let just anybody be all up in all up in your business okay because not everybody knows how to do hair and that's facts you got all these all these braiders all these people that are unlicensed and they have a business even licensed people all these people that just have a business license or unlicensed a lot of them just don't know what they're doing and then like even if they do know what they're doing that doesn't mean they know customer service a lot of people don't know customer service so i mean at the end of the day you don't really know what you're getting when you find somebody to do your hair, but you can minimize the amount of uncertainty by doing your research first before you just let anybody and everybody in your hair because not everybody has your best interest at heart. Honestly, just not everybody that claims to do hair can actually do hair. So definitely wanna do your research, look at their work. And then if they don't have even work up, ask them for pictures. Like, what does your work look like? And then the customer service is a whole nother thing. But point is like, you just, you just don't want to have anybody in your hair, especially when you know, especially when you're fully capable of doing your own hair, you want to make sure that if you're going to have somebody else do it, that they are much better at doing your hair. Or at least not, not much better, but they're at least on the same level as you when it comes to how, how to do your hair. Because when you know how to do your hair, it's because you have observed it and you know what works for your hair. But when a professional does it, it's especially like for the first time, they don't know what your hair, how your hair behaves, how it is, you do. So you gotta find a professional that knows what they're doing so that when they observe your hair for the first time, they know what to do. Or at least they can get a good grasp of what to do. Not not every not every hairstylist can, can do that. So you definitely wanna look out for the ones that can and minimize any like uncertainty or any many of the unknown that comes with trying to find somebody to do your hair because the more uncertain you are about the details then you probably don't want them to do your hair honestly but my last tip is do not self-deprecate on your natural hair do not talk down on your natural hair and i get so tired of this bro I've been getting compliments on my hair ever since i started finally learning how to do it around like high school or so and a lot of the times when people compliment me, they tend to bash themselves. I'm talking like, 
oh, I wish my hair could do that. I wish, not really talk down on themselves. Well, sometimes they do. They'll be like, my hair sucks. I can't, I can't do that with my hair. But it's usually coming from a place of like, I don't have this, I wish I had that. It's coming from a place of lack. Like, I like this, I like that. And that's just, I hate that way of thinking because the hair that grows out of your head is perfectly fine. Like, it would be even better if you took care of it. But that's another story. Either way, like, my hair doesn't look like this for no reason. I take care of my hair. I put time and money into my hair for it to look like how it does. My hair is naturally like this, but I also upkeep it. Not everybody can say the same. Like, you probably, matter of fact, everybody has beautiful natural hair, everybody. But it may not seem like it when you don't upkeep it, when you don't keep up with it, when you don't take care of it and give it TLC. When you're not doing what you need to do for your hair to look its best, it's gonna seem like your hair is trash when really you just don't get, you just don't take care of it. And you know, that's okay, but you can't be talking down on it as if that's how your hair naturally is when it's not. And then like, even if you do take care of it and it's healthy and all that, and you're still talking down on it, like that's not okay. Have some confidence in your hair because that's that's you. That's hair that's growing out of your head and you're taking care of it. If you want, me personally, if I'm gonna put all this time and care into my hair, I'm not finna talk down on it because this, this is the work of art that I done made, that I done created. Like, like why would I talk down on something that's a part of me? And like, I just, honestly, that whole, that whole coming from a place of lack, like my hair can't do this, my hair can't do that, my hair doesn't look like this, my hair, my, blah, 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 my 4C can never, my 4C can never last in 4C, especially like the girls with the kinkiest hair types. I understand given like how the natural hair movement started and also just discrimination for I mean, discrimination against our hair, but that's why you have to have confidence in your hair in the first place because you can't be given into what our oppressors have been telling us for years. Like, oh, your hair is unprofessional, it's unruly, it's not good. Like, you do realize when you talking down on your hair, like my hair can't do this, it looks like this, da 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 da. You realize that you're really just internalizing what other people have been saying about our hair since the dawn of time. Like, and that's not good. Like, baby, let's have some self-respect, okay? And like, just because your hair may not be able to do exactly what mine does, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that your hair can do that mine probably can't. But you can't be looking at some somebody else's grass. You gotta grow your own. You gotta grow your own hair and figure out what it can do and what you like it to do. You can't be looking at mine and being like, oh, I wish my hair did that, da, 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 da. You need to be looking at your hair, worried about your hair and what it can do, not what it can't do. And that's really like a life tip. But since this is like what not to do your hair, like don't talk down on your hair. That's probably, that's really a pet peeve of mine. Like I can talk about this for days. Like do not talk down on your hair and talking about the stuff it can't do and how it looks bad and da, 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 like please please i can't i can't do it because i have some confidence dang i'm sorry i just get real passionate about that because you should love your hair you really should love your hair and not saying it's easy to but at least work towards loving your hair and talking better about it but yeah that was my that was my bonus tip but that brings me to the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed and got some value out of it. Hopefully I gave you some good advice or any kind of advice that you will actually internalize. If not, it's okay. You know, at least you watched. Maybe it'll internalize later at some point and you'll understand. But if any questions, comments, comments, concerns, down in the comments and I'll get to it. You could subscribe, like, turn on post notifications and all that. Follow my social medias even. But it's no pressure, no pressure. But if you want to support your girl, you would just hit those buttons real quick and you know follow my socials and all that because it really don't take that long it don't take that long but i digress remember to never stop growing and i'll see y'all tomorrow in the next video bye